Hello and welcome back to the Planet Protectors live stream. Tonight we talk about the pros and cons to industrial or factory farming. But before that, you need our weekly or episodally riddle. Here it is. What goes up and down a hill but never moves? The answer will be revealed at the end of the show and that is when you can submit your answers. But for now, let's go on to industrial farming. Benefits of industrial farming. Opinion. Why industrial farms are so good for the environment. Positives to factory farming despite any person's opinion. Versus. Nine facts about factory farming that will break your heart. Industrial farming is one of the worst crimes in history. And 10 alarming facts about the lives of factory farmed animals. Yeek. Okay, those are all article titles from places like The Guardian, New York Times, Huffington Post, and more. Clearly, they, there are two sides to this conversation. After all, 99%, 99% of all meat, dairy, and egg products in the U.S. come from factory farms, and Canada cannot possibly be that different. But before I get into that, you should really know what industrial farming is or industrial agriculture or factory farming. It's the same thing, just go by different words. It's basically getting the most food production, but still keeping the prices low and at a very large scale. So you have tons of these animals. I'm, I'll show a few photos, so like, for example, here with these chickens, you have tons of them. Clearly they are going to produce a lot of eggs and when you kill them, there's chicken breasts, wings, whatever you use the chicken for. There's like tons of it and it's not super expensive to keep all of this up. It's not super cheap, but not super expensive. All right, so in some of these cases, big companies own these industrial farms and are willing to do whatever it takes to make the most amount of money. It's been heard of that some of these farms have given cows hormones. So they produce more milk and it increases the growth rate of calves and it can make them more muscular over time. So let's say it takes them a calf two years to get this high in 18 months they could be the same height where normally they shouldn't be, or like maybe even 10 months. Like it's, it's pretty crazy. Some animals grow three times faster than they should. And like, that is not great. What if humans were growing three times faster than we should? No. Now let's discuss some of the pros and cons to industrial farming. Let's start with the pros. Number one, it creates jobs. In 2020, there were roughly 280,000 people working in this industry in Canada. As you know, jobs are necessary for a lot of people and jobs can be hard to find. If we wipe out the entire industry, that's hundreds of thousands of people with no jobs. So if that were to happen, we would need to provide them with another alternative, probably yeah, probably kind of different, possibly better for the environment. Number two, it increases food production. This one is super important. Here's the big thing. These farms can mass produce food with over, and with over 7 billion people, you do need to mass produce food. All of those people need to eat and mass producing, it does make sense. And if you've ever seen what another, like a non-factory farm where they only have like maybe 15 cows, that's not mass producing food at all. Number three, it can be cheaper for the customer or the consumer. When you mass produce things, the technology is different and the overall cost of the whole production can be cheaper with certain methods. That way you can still make a good amount of money, but it can also lower the price so pe more people buy their products because if their products are just as expensive as the farm, as the normal farm stuff, the organic, 
and people would probably go for the organic but if you get um let's say ground beef a dollar cheaper people are going to go for that and usually that is where this industry comes in number four the food can make it to the store faster when the animals are already in a contained area in their trucks and a packaging place, it does go a lot faster. So where do you stand on that? Do you want it to come fast and not in the most sustainable way? Or would you like it to, to become slower and not, not come as fast? All right, so those are the cons. Um, few cons. No, sorry, those were the pros. Few pros. I was like, I was reading cons on here. Um, now we're going on to the cons. There are just as many cons. All right, number one con, and this is probably not just on my list, but the number one probably everywhere is this. There is animal cruelty. Some chickens spend their life go the chicken one some chickens spend their life on the place the size of an ipad and an ipad that's not very big a chicken spends all of their life on an like the the space the size of an ipad that's that's crazy and let me go pigs pregnant pigs also live in cramped cages pregnant pigs they're not they're already big enough and i'd like bunch of babies to it they just get even bigger and the last fact is some ducks turkeys and chickens are de-beaked so they don't kill each other um i found this fact shocking because like they're in these really cramped areas and like they will peck each other to death So this really is, this really is unacceptable. Like this should not be happening in our world. All right, number two, it does have its own environmental concerns. From greenhouse gas emissions to air and water pollution, it is not the most environmentally friendly way to go. The UN or United Nations says that it costs the equivalent of roughly three trillion Canadian dollars for all of the things that this is doing for the, to the environment. Number three, fertilizers are used and can contribute to health issues. Factory farming has been linked to different diseases. It has also created air pollution and for someone who is working there or living near the area, it's not great for their health at all because of all of the air pollution. And I know I didn't talk to you about this at the beginning, but industrial farming is not just about animals. It also has to do with plants as well. So this episode is more on the animal side, but plants are pretty interesting with this too. So fertilizers to make these plants grow fast and so insects don't invade these plants. Like... People go through crazy shortcuts just so we can get our meal. Fertilizers are also not great for human health and we eat them. Well, we eat the food that has the fertilizer on it. All right, number four for the cons. This is the last con of the night. I'll put a different photo up. It might produce low quality food. In this industry, people care about money, as I've said, and not just about feeding people. So the food that they produce might not always have the best quality. It's possible the cow or whatever animal it is might not be fully developed. Like the quality might not be the best. So those were four pros and cons to factory farms. The point I'm trying to get across is basically be careful about what you are purchasing. Try to shop local from farmers and try to eat less meat because we are told that red meat, so mainly cow um, and beef is bad for the environment with climate change. Yes, that is true. But we also have to think of how the animals are treated. 
So it really comes down to your opinion with this. And when I first started researching this, I was only paying attention to the cons, but there are, there are a few different pros to the factory farming too. So again, your opinion, kind of like my uh, vegan episode in season one. If you Google this, a lot of results will pop up um, and like any questions, it'll pop up. All right, so now on to the eco pot. All right, these were freshly shuffled beforehand and you all know how this works. Um, I have the pot, I have the eco cards and let's do this. This part of the show is not scripted, remember. All right, the first eco card is, which is this one. Um, instead of using an electric dryer for your laundry, opt to line dry or use a clothes rack instead. Yes, this one is probably a lot easier in the summer months, um, but yeah, it works. You can also hang them up inside. It probably won't dry as fast, but I mean, it works. <laughs> All right, card number two is this one. All right, house plants help to absorb CO2 or carbon dioxide in the room. So pick some that are easy to care for. Plants, yes, plants in rooms and inside. They don't just freshen the air, but they're also good. Um, they look good too. All right, third eco card of the night is uh, this guy. All right, always have a reusable shopping bag handy so you can avoid single-use plastic bags. Yes, yes, I, that cannot be more right because like how many times have you gone to the grocery store, for example, to pick up a few things then you come back with a lot and you only bring one reusable bag the rest have to be plastic like even just having them in the trunk of your car in the back seat that really helps and just having them by the door so you can pay attention and look at them all right this is the last eco card of the night all right oh okay it is Think twice each time you go to throw something away. Could you repurpose it in any way? I like this one because let's say you're throwing out a jar into the recycling bin, I hope. Recycling. Um, you're throwing it out and is there any use you could use for it? Like sometimes you do need jars. Maybe you could put bacon grease in it or whatever you use. But like even soup cans, bacon grease going in that will will give it another use but also any hand things like um a soup can you can use that for a pencil holder um i've used it for that before <laughs> all right so that was the eco pot for this episode now let's go on to animal of the week Woo! animal of the week Welcome to Animal of the Week. This week's animal is the first reptile featured on the show. It is tough and people are usually scared of these guys. You have the reptile in your mind? Well, the animal is, let me find him, there we go. The animal is, drum roll please. The American Crocodile. Uh, these guys are different from alligators, and here's how you can tell the difference. Crocodiles have a more U-shaped snout, which is that, the long part over there. U and alligators have more of a V, and you can think of it as like an A, because an A would be more like that. Well, you know what an A looks like, um, but anyway. So alligators have a more A, more V, more A, and then crocodiles have a more, I guess more of a C, a U, C. 
These meat-eating reptiles live in more heated places of North America and Central America. These crocs also come from eggs and can eat a cow. A cow. They can eat a cow. That is crazy. They also feast on birds, frogs, different mammals, including cows, turtles, insects, crabs, and snails. Snails, okay. So that is a really big diet. These reptiles also have 64 teeth. I don't even, I think humans have 20, 30, but anyway, they do have big teeth. Someone asked if they can eat humans. Um, I don't know, maybe. Probably could, but I don't think they do. All right. Oh, they are also cold-blooded, so that is why they are in warmer areas, so they can let the sun shine down on them. Well, that was a great episode. We did an interesting animal of the week, we did a cool ego pot, and we did a controversial main topic about industrial farms. So, you need to hear the riddle and you need an answer. Let's hear it first. What goes up and down a hill and never moves? Please submit your answers now. The official answer is a path. So a path, a trail, they intermingle as the same thing. Mountains can have stairs, I think. So yeah, that could work too. Make sure to check out the Planet Protectors podcast with all of our archived live streams in season two, now streaming on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Google Podcasts. And look on our Instagram page on March 5th because there will be a new event coming then. That's it for me. Have a great rest of your evening and remember to stay eco.